She trying to let us know that it's time to get busy on the mic, bro. On the ones and the twos, man. Let's get it. What's good, big homie? Well, like Jay-Z say, let's go. Let's go, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tenth Reality Show, episode number 48. Damn, What's is up, that many? Sir? Yeah, man, we in there like, uh, hey, we, we in there like swimwear, baby. We deep now. Come on, man. I'm telling you, we got so many episodes right now that on my Facebook feed, you know how they show you on this day this year. I'm already starting to see intent of reality. Oh, so nice! Stuff. Come nice. on, we man. Up and already. Yes, Let's sir. Go. Yes, sir. We already we didn't we didn't already lap third and headed to the crib. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Yes, sir. Tent reality show. Everybody get at us at Spotify, Stitcher, Our Heart Radio, YouTube, Podbean, any and everywhere you get your podcast, man. Come on this journey with us, man. We talking Tent about reality.com. Yes, sir. Tent reality show.com. Hit up the show at tent reality show at gmail.com. All of the above, man. What's good, sir? Happy uh yeah. happy hump day to you. Hump day. I'm feeling great right now. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I'm in good spirits and nothing like that. I mean, I feel like I'm Ooh. great right now. Ooh, I bet you, you know won't breathe on it. I bet you won't breathe on it. What's good, you man? Do you don't want me to do that. Well, Kanye, I wish I can give you that feeling. You've been telling me to jump off the bridge. Now I jumped off a lot of bridges lately. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm I see saying. a lot of success in the future. Everything on the bubble. We had like 90% on three different yeah. things. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to explode out here, baby. And yeah. the sad thing is, nobody can stop me. Ooh, come on, man. I see you. I'm my own worst enemy, and I'm out the way. When what a man, when a man is flexing the brim like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When the man is is, is cupping on the fitted, yo, he, mm-hmm. he, he's telling real talk right there, oh. man. That's what's up, man. Great things, big things popping, little shit stopping. I feel that, but I love that, bro. All it is, man. I'm just trying to keep up with you, big bro. Ooh, boy, come on now. For real. Hey, hey, iron shop is iron, man. Long we doing that, it's gonna be a one hell of a race, brother. You know what I'm saying? Back, back. When we get off this, yeah, let's talk about that duplex. Okay, okay. We 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 dig in, we dig in for sure, man. I'm for real. Hey, first and foremost, man, I know the reason I'm feeling good. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling a little Juneteenth-ish. You Come know on, what I'm man. Saying? I'm feeling kind of June. Background, baby. Y'all see you, man, flexing in the background, man. Congress passed a bill making Juneteenth a federal holiday long overdue, in my opinion. But I hey, but I'll take it, sir. I will take nah, gladly take I'm it. I'm not grateful, man. Keep fucking working. <laughs> Keep fucking working. I'm gonna work. to earn my, my pleasure. I ain't hey, we, plead that. We're gonna work regardless. No, nah, I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about Congress and goddamn House Representatives. I ain't oh. impressed yet. Keep going. You should have did that in the 60s. Keep going. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and here's the thing though, as 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 warranted as that legislation is and was, right? It's uh it's long overdue. You know what I mean? So yeah, yay. <laughs> you know My what I mean? My grandma should have celebrated that. She done Real passed away. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. I mean, but shout out to the states that were already doing that. Shout out to the businesses and the corporations exactly. that were already ahead of the federal uh, uh, power exactly. curve, man, because they saw the vision and they saw the significance of an, uh, an event like that and what it means to an entire group of people. You know what I mean? And so um, shout out to those guys that that's, that's been getting down with it, man. I, I remember being stationed in Fort Hood. And uh, they would have these celebrations, man, back, we were talking 20 years ago, bro. They would bring HBCUs, Battle of the Bands in the park, on, you know what man. I mean, for Juneteenth celebration, man. That was love right there, man. Come on, man. That's the whole vibe, dog. And so now we we, we doing this celebration. Um, and, and yet and still, um, I think for Congress, uh, it was low-hanging fruit. It was easy yeah. to pick, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, we got to do something. And so I, I'm they, torn, they, bro. They checked for backlash last year. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They check for backlash. Oh, wait, we ain't really get no backlash. Oh, we can go ahead and do this. Move forward with that. Who doesn't like a day off? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who doesn't like a day off? Hey, Black I, I people, mean, I'm not going to say we celebrate Columbus Day, but we take part in it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody going to like, work. What you I mean? Ain't coming in today? Cool. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, I'll take it anybody day off, bro. I don't care who it is. I ain't got to be here to deal with this shit. Cool. Exactly. Cool. Bet it up. Bet it up, man. And the significance of this year, you know, Sam being Father's Day. That's, that's, that's beautiful. I love the way things lined up, man. It should be a lot of celebrations this weekend out there in the, in the, in the world, bro. And I hope everybody just do it safely, man. Real spit. Exactly. Don't think, man. Yeah, I'm going I'm, I'm to have to... I'm gonna have to get my swag on, man. I'm gonna have to merch it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're gonna be on this microphone on June 10th. Uh, let's get it, man. Yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back on my road trip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We ain't learned nothing from last year when we do the short, short notice. Nah, that. <laughs> <laughs> we just jump in there, man. Keep it a party going, bro. Real talk, man. Yes, yeah, man. Hey, before we get started, man. Mm hmm. Hell, I before thought we were started. started. You know what I'm saying? I told you, you know what I'm saying? Before we really, really, really get Okay, into, my bad, my bad. You know what I'm saying? Because we actually got a topic we're going to talk about today. It ain't like a normal yeah. episode. We got something that's on our heart, so I'm going to let my man breathe as long as he want on this topic. But before we get to that, look, we're looking for soldiers. We don't want to be the only voice for the soldier on this show. So if you got something to say and you're willing to say it, let us know. Mm. A lot of people want to say stuff, but they still in uniform, so they, they feel like they can't express themselves freely yet. I understand that. I was there. I know. I know the games. You know what I'm saying? But if you are free, if you a vet, you ain't got no more ties, Oh man! come up here and express your opinion, even if it doesn't match what we saying. We respect it because we know where you've been. We know you put your hand in that sand. And for yeah. yes, forever respect. Bet it up, bro. Bet it up. And, and in that spirit, right? Uh, what takes us to the uh, the topic of the evening, man? We're talking about uh, mental health awareness, and we want to talk about um, just kind of looking out for your battle buddies long after you take the uniform off, brother. Because once you share those ranks with somebody, bro, the ranks are never should never be broken. You know what I mean? Exactly. Good, bad, or indifferent, man. And I, I, I get some people are just like that. Some people just they didn't want to be in the unit anyway, and they ain't fuck with nobody in the unit. They don't care. I'm happy to be out, forget everybody, and they probably burned their class A's on the way out. You know, oh, <laughs> you got man. those individuals, you know what I'm saying? But even though, even those individuals need a point of contact as well, man. And so, again, in that spirit, man, um, my heart is heavy, um, to, to, to put it honestly, because one of the homies um, has moved on to Valhalla, you feel me? One of my, my warrior battle buddies then transitioned and, um, and he struggled with that PTSD thing real heavy. You dig? And I and knowing that, and you know the three o'clock in the morning phone calls he and I used to have, and uh, just regular conversation we used to have. You know, some days you're in good spirits, and some days that that monkey's on your back. And uh, it was a pleasure just to share the battlefield with the brother and uh, and get to know him personally and just organically, not just what the uniforms say. And so, my, man, my brother and I we had this conversation the other day. And I was like, man, once you stand next to a man or a woman, you say, hey, uh, we both here together, you know, depending on where these bullets come in, I, I could possibly die next to you. That That's a bond right there, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's your six is a real thing. Like yeah, real talk, man. And so when uh, one of the brothers or one of the sisters, um, you know, is out of ranks, you know what I mean? Um, then it weighs heavy, man. And um, we're we looking at it now. So we, in the next couple of days, I'll be, you know, traveling and uh and we're gonna send the brother home off right because i know that uh if the shoe's on the other foot yeah, he'd be exactly. sending my ass home right you feel me and so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna show love we're gonna fellowship and we're gonna let the immediate family know that hey your family is bigger than you think you have extended family out here that, that love and appreciate that brother and we had to we don't have to just say thank you for your service because we witnessed a service for hand firsthand we, we witnessed the late nights and the early mornings, the mentorship, the camaraderie, um, and and all in all, just having a brother back. You know what I mean? We, we witnessed that firsthand, and so we're gonna break bread with the fam, man, and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna send the brother home properly, and it's gonna be um, it's gonna be an honor to do so. You know what I mean? Real talk. And so, and saying that, um, and saying that, I'm uh, you know, thinking about the fact that we have to continue to constantly reach out. And so I got a, another buddy. He does his monthly 
Buddy Check, man. Shout out to Gondola, man. I hope you listen to the show. He does a monthly Buddy Check, uh, buddy check on Facebook and just say, hey, Buddy Check. Just simple as that. Two words, Buddy Check. That's for every and everybody he ever served with. Served with. And you will be surprised, Rio, um, uh, uh, of the number of responses that he get just off of two words. You know, whether it's good to go. Hey, brother, I'm struggling right now, but thank you for checking in. You know, so many, so many soldiers actually respond. And it's, some of us get crazy. And I'll be sending gifs and shit just because that's <laughs> my nature, right. you know. A little dancing baby talking about I'm good, you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's something as simple as that, man. We we tend to throw away the alert roster once we're no longer in that unit and when we're no longer in uniform. And um, in reality, the alert roster has to remain uh, uh, activated, bro. Right. It's a, it's it has to remain funny. activated. And for people out there that don't know what an alert roster is, it's a, a list of contact numbers for everybody within the, the task organization for that particular company, squad, platoon, or what have you. And it's the way we communicate with each other when um, something happens. And so we got to maintain those uh, that continuity between uh, uh, brothers and sisters in arms, man. And and and, and saying that it, it's not uncommon to um, to leave a unit. Because guess what? You go to another unit, now your family just expanded even more. You know exactly. what I mean? Some of those guys are going to be from your previous unit. Some guys, you, you may be the FNG, the freaking new guy, right? And then you might not know the FNG. Everybody hates being the FNG, doc. But then you may get there and then you're the new guy on ground. And so, but those bonds, that commonality, man, that same common mission, task-oriented purpose automatically takes hold, man. And uh, a lot of people think that, I know, I know I'm long-winded, brother, I'm sorry, but. No, keep eating, baby, uh, keep eating. Uh, a lot of people that, that never served in the military, and I would say this, they think that, or it may be a common misconception. I don't want to kind of, you know, paint with a broad brush there, but they think it's about soldiering, you know, and it's not, it's, it's, it's not about deploying. It's a, it's not about none of that. It's about them brothers and sisters to the left and the right of you, to the front and to the back of you. And that is, it's ingrained in you early on when you can't go to the bathroom without a battle buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know you can't take a piss without your mans, yo. You know what I mean. And so, and, and saying that, you know, it's extending that well beyond our time of service, man. Because old old soldiers eventually retire, some shape, form, or fashion. You either ETS die yeah. out, or you, or you know, or you retire. One of the three. You know gotcha. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, and saying that, man. um I have my personal mission right now. Um, aside from all of all of the business stuff that you know dabbling in, but it's to close them ranks, man. It's to 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 maintain those connections and continuities by any means possible, man. I'm currently working to try to do a mental health retreat um, uh, for uh, my unit, my old unit, because he, my 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 buddy who passed, he's not the only one that was struggling, bro. It's, exactly. it's plenty of them, you know, it's plenty, 22 a day. You see the hat. Thousands. Thousands. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, at least on the average, 22 a day. And uh, we want to get out there, man, and, and we have to take advantage of the opportunities that are provided by certain organizations, man. You know, whether it's the Wounded Water Project and, and, and countless others, you know what I mean? Right. Take advantage of those opportunities, man, and just get in and speak with somebody. I urge every single veteran uh, or just human for that matter, man. Otherwise, man, please recognize the 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 trauma that you hold. You know what I mean? The baggage that you carry, either consciously or, or, or subconsciously. You know what right. I mean? And, and get that get that monkey up off you, man. Free your life up. Get that monkey off your back. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Yeah, you got to talk, man. Again, I'm I, I, effort. Well, I hate you. You kind of faded. You faded it takes out. Of concentrated effort. Yeah, absolutely, bro. It is, man. I, and again, from a personal standpoint, um, yeah, everybody know me. I'm harder than woodpecker lips, bro. And um, I, I didn't know that I needed to talk until I actually went in and talked. Right. You know. Um, and when I did, I, I think I said this on the pod before. It was as if a weight was lifted off me. It was as if the the IOTV, that IBA, that flak vest, that bulletproof vest I had worn all those deployments, man, it was finally off my back and I felt that much better and I felt lighter because a lot of us, you know, some of us had trauma from tra childhood or whatever, just right. from just life, 
And then some of us got this trauma that we acquired by soldiering and going hard for this country. You know what I mean? Looking out for our brothers and sisters in arms. And so my whole purpose was I didn't want to retire out of the service and still be holding that baggage because I didn't come in an army with that baggage. Right. So I acquired that by, by being a, a dedicated active duty service member for 20 plus years. Yeah. And so, now imagine somebody who brought childhood trauma. Yes. And added military trauma and like all they dealing with. It just compounds, bro. It compounds and it compounds. And, uh, my whole thought process was, I was like, well, I didn't come in the army with this crap, so I'm going to leave it where I got it from. You know That's what I mean? That's dope that you could do that. Yeah, real talk. It, it, it's, um, I had to, and it, it made my transition uh, 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 to another functioning member of uh, society. <laughs> you know on. what I mean? <laughs> because, well, you know, man, being in the army is so dope, man, and you have so little worries a lot. Everything is pretty much taken care of for you, bro. You didn't yeah. even realize it. You know what I mean? Your day laid out, basically. Your day laid out, man. You know what you're wearing. You know what you're eating at. And if you can't afford to eat, you can eat for free. It's like exactly. you straight, man. And, you know, a lot of people even struggle with that alone. They may have gone 20 years or whatever and transitioned with no, no mental health issues whatsoever. But that factor of I don't know what I'm doing next could right. be the trigger. I know. Yeah, the unknown could be the trigger, man. And so and trans transitioning is a beast, bro. You know it. Shit. Yep. You know it firsthand, man. I, um, when you talk to soldiers or, you know, vets, I should say, when you talk to vets, a lot of them don't miss the training. You know what I'm saying? We don't miss the things you think we would miss. We miss the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Like working for a civilian company is nothing like being in the army. Like, <laughs> like it, it's true trust. It's like almost like the trust you have for your, your strongest family members. You know what I'm Facts. saying? And then the flip side of that is I, I it's almost like we bipolar. You know what I'm saying? Like we could be having a great day, something happened, boom, we snapping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If we not getting the help with that, that's what leads down the wrong path. Like I know for me, I couldn't handle like horns honking if I couldn't see the car. If I could mm. see the car, no problem. But like I worked at a car dealership, if the doors were down and they were honking, so we opened the door for them, that shit would set me off, bro. Like for real. Wow. Cause I always in my mind, bomb about to blow up. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like car bomb. And people they didn't understand, like until one day I really snapped and they was just mm -hmm. like, Oh shit, like he not playing, like nothing. Like, no, I've, I've been playing this whole time. Like, I've been telling you, don't do it. These, are, these ain't games, B. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I haven't seen one third, oh, excuse me, one hundredth of what you've seen. You know what I'm saying? You so I can what? imagine how somebody in your footsteps. I, I would, I, I could say game. this. Um, you know, we tend as soldiers, right? Because, you know, going going to have someone uh help you with mental health has been was stigmatized for so long as right. as, as being you weak. weak yeah you're weak in the army or in the military in general just because you went to behavior health and you talk to somebody what have you but i think um i think now there, there, there's a there's a huge push to obviously remove that stigma and and to realize that you 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 are a much more well-rounded total soldier concept individual when you right. seek that help man because it's not just a physical who cares if you can run two miles in 10 minutes that don't matter bro if your mental ain't tight that's the easy part yeah that's the easy part if you struggle in push-ups you, you can get better at push-ups that's the yep. easy part the hard part is the mental because that makes everything else work you know what i mean and um i think that I, and i've seen it firsthand um when people, I say, when other soldiers discredit other soldiers' service in terms of, well, he didn't leave the FOB. He can't be, he can't have PTSD. You know what I mean? I we're not, not going to pick on the Air Force on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but you stupid. <laughs> really, though, no, man. Uh, shout out to the Air Force, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, man, like I hear it all the time, and but you never know. Like for some people, it, it, it's it's all about perspective. It's about the individual. 
Well, you got some people that, that probably snipers that have murked a whole bunch of people and left there and eat ice cream every night and just their life is wonderful. You know what I mean? And then you got one person that may have seen one IED blast or lost one buddy, uh, even not, not even death, just injury or the right. fear of mortars just randomly falling out the sky. I was at Mortar you know? so you ain't got to tell yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's that can be traumatizing, me. man. 365 days living your life on the edge of your seat, ready for the jump off, dog. Yeah. Come on, bro. Ready for the ready for the jump off? That's taxing on anybody, bro. So it's I true. and, and, it's and it's that's just a broad statement for anybody who have ever found themselves out there discrediting another service member service. Um, you know, we can't do it. You know, no matter the scale, no matter the scope. No matter the degree of which that individual is dealing with something, man, we have to close ranks and 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 take care of one another, brother. Um, and I'm not saying that my man didn't have that, um, because I made it a point. What, no matter where I was at, no matter what I was doing, when it was his time to talk, it was his time to talk, bro. He exactly. did that, and I know that. Might be on the phone an hour and not say nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just listen. Yeah. If, if that's what my man needs, and that's what my man needs, bro. And that goes opposite. If I need to call somebody, I call brothers all the time, bro, and just say, "Man, I love you, dog." Like, like we you know, did we that. say that to each other all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, bro, I, I'm, you know, shit. A matter of fact, it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's crazy. Um, so my LT from downrange, man. Shout out to LT and uh, my old platoon sergeant, man. We had we had a little chat going a few weeks ago, and we was talking about, it. yo, man, it's been it's the ten year anniversary since that particular deployment. Yo, we, mm. need to, we need to link up, bro. It's a reunion, man. Let's get down. Let's let, we got to do something, bro. And I'm sitting here, I'm trying to quarterback, man. You know, I go in plan mode. I do a five paragraph op order. I'm already assigning missions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on now. And so uh, we talking about it, and then uh, the thought had, you know, and then you know, we heard about we heard about the homie, and uh, the thought had left my mind. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna see him there. We're gonna link up. And then he texts me today. He said, man, how crazy is it that? we were just talking about we need to link up since it's been 10 years we need to really sit down and really break bread and just give each other a fucking hug you know what i mean like exactly we need to do that and and this happens he you know honestly we we wish it was in a better circumstance because um our brother who who won't be there um he's a big part of that he's a big part of that collective that we had and and that made it work you know i mean when you needed that comfort on your left and your right he was that dude that stand up real one that you could depend on, you know what I mean? And so, you know, we kind of looked at it like, hey, we said we need a reunion, man, and exactly. there's his way of still taking care of us. Let's say, hey, y'all need to come Hopefully together. some people that wouldn't have came to the reunion to come now. Yeah. Because of the circumstance. And then that maybe some, they may they reach out to one of y'all while y'all there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it, get that much yeah. better. Yeah, man, real talk, real talk. And so- in death. He has a purpose, you know still, what I'm saying? Still taking care of his boys, bro. Exactly. That's love, man. Come on, dog. Exactly. Come on, dog. And that's what we're gonna do, man. We're gonna we're gonna probably get drunk and tell some lies, man. You know. Man. <laughs> you can lie to your family. And you it's know it's so ironic, bro. Again, not necessarily ironic, man, but I say this particular deployment, man, um, OEF 1011, bro, was so was so hard on a lot of us. Um, we, we did a lot, we seen a lot, we had to endure a lot of the suck, right? We had to embrace the suck. And um, and, and in doing so, man, um, so many different bonds were formed and what have you, but that was that's why the reason I, I was writing, well, I am writing my book about this particular deployment, brother. It was that hmm. taxing, um, just from a- and you had a dedication. Yeah, yeah, this, this, was, this was that book. This is that book, that, you know, of this particular time, man. Um, and, um, it was so taxing on another level, on so many levels and, um, mentally, uh, from a leadership challenge standpoint, um, from a, a tactical strategic, now, hold on, yeah, war gaming standpoint, all of that. Let's get people understanding. This is like your fourth deployment at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is not like your this is not yeah, your Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the, I mean it was the first deployment for some, obviously, but right. um for many of us, we, we were a bunch of uh seasoned dudes, bro. You know what I mean? Like we 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 had seen a lot of the, you know, and and luckily enough, because I, I think that if we hadn't had um senior That's leadership right. and guys that, that had that tactical resolve about them, we would have been in a much more compromised position. 
You know what I mean? And so I just wanted um, to let the people know that this wasn't your first rodeo. Excuse me, your first rodeo. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you, the way you're speaking, like this was. You know what I'm saying? The shit. And it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was you know the toughest by like, far, this bro. First time, so this. <laughs> It's not like you're not speaking from experience, like you know what I'm saying. It was the toughest by far, man. And I, I promise you, in the book, you see uh, the very first quote, the very first quote in the book, is from my homeboy, uh, uh, Jason Gibbons. Man, shout out to Gib, man, my guy. He's still my neighbor in Texas. He, he owned the house next door to him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, you know, we were in Korea, and um, we were sitting there, and I was getting ready to push out, get ready to PCS, and go to Fort Campbell. Man, shout out to the hundred and first. And uh, he was like, yo, man, you know, you going down range? I'm like, yeah, brother, you know, and I hadn't, to this particular point, had a few Iraq deployments, but I had yet to beat Afghanistan. And so he said, hey, man, um, you know, I know you gained a lot of, and he's 11 Bravo, you know, Blue Court. I speak. Master guns all day, you know. Oh, Mike Golf, man. He'll, he'll love me that I said that about him. Uh, <laughs> But uh, he's like, yo, bro, you know, I'm, I'm glad you got a lot of experience on it because Afghanistan ain't no joke. He said, Iraq is high school and Afghanistan is the pros. Oh, we wow. We ain't talking college. Oh, wow. Because I never went I, to Africa. I was yeah. He said it's high school. He said Iraq is the pros. He had just got back from downrange uh, when he came to the unit with us, you know what I'm saying, over there in Korea. And so I, I never forgot that. And so when I'm preparing for that particular deployment, I, I went with that mindset already kind of ingrained. I mean, there's, uh, I prepare for battle, like straight up for real. Like, I, you know, probably like as much as LeBron prepared for a game or MJ right. prepares for a game instantly. You know, that's what I did on every, every, uh, every is, train up and every Sunday. So you prepared at all. Time. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you stay yeah. ready. And so I took that in there, man. I, I remember sending him an email from down range just saying, yo, bro, dang. Like after the first few engagements that we had, I was like, yo, you 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 were spot on with your assessment, sir. <laughs> like 100%, bro. You know what I mean? And and still the fact that so many different moments of that particular deployment still resonate with me. Um, and I know it resonated with my brothers and sisters that were there with us as well, man. And so many others, obviously. But the thing was real deal, bro. And that, again, that 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 makes me more driven, more determined than ever. And you know me, I'm like a dog with a bone, brother. I don't let go. Um, right. to, to really establish uh, some continuity in, in terms of checking on one another, brother. Because to, to even our, our brother that passed, man, um, I know the work that he put in. I saw it firsthand. You know what I mean? Right. Was, when times was tough, it was me and him in the smoke pit. You know, I don't even smoke like that, but I'm puffing on the stogie like... <laughs> Ooh, all right. <laughs> Whatever you can do to clear your mind, like it. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, so that just happened. And uh, you know, we get to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was basically practice. Yeah, tomorrow. yeah. That was a warm-up lab, man. You know that way we just came from, we just got shot up, blown up, and all that other stuff. We got to do it again tomorrow. You exactly. Know? And and that's what soldiers do. Um Again, that, warriors, bro. Warriors. That's what warriors do. Yeah, there you go. Come on, man. Come on, bro. And this is called the spectrum. I, I love what we are, I, I think, as a nation to a degree. Um, when it's when it's, you know, that, you know, thank you for your service and your military discounts and and all this other good stuff. And that's fine and dandy. But uh, and I love every organization that take the time, they did it that 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 volunteer spirit that philanthropy spirit to do so many great things on behalf of the troops man and that cannot be understated enough and and the reality is is that them soldiers already pay for that and not just this generation of of, of the american defenders right this generation of warriors Vietnam. so many yeah so many those who did Three minutes, three years, or thirty years, you know, so many Americans, man, that that one percent, right? He said it's that one percent that actually serve in the armed forces, man, at any given time. That one percent of a uh, service men, men and women um has done so much, bro. And, and and to me, they're owed so much. And I, you know, when you see a homeless vet, it's not just because he can't get a job, bro. He's he's, he's he or she is processing some shit right now. Yeah. You know, 
and, and, and they're and doing what the best they can to deal with it on their own. Yeah, which is alcohol and drugs. Yeah, they processing, bro. And, and and so um we got to get it right man when we talk about taking care of these individuals I, I, there's not a day that i don't wake up and thank the lord that i still have my faculties about me bro me too like for real for real because i know brothers and sisters that don't have their faculties about them right now bro and, yeah. and, and whether you know mentally or and or physically my physical ain't the best you know what I'm saying no spring chicken but i do i you feel me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just ain't gonna run over me. I'm still nice with it. <laughs> ain't no killer, but no push. <laughs> Come on, man. But they, they, hey, that's for anybody that wanna test it, brother. You know what I'm saying? But no, nah, uh, but again, I'm so thankful for that and um just mentally being able to compartmentalize and, and, and rationalize and take a logistical uh not a logistical, I'm thinking log- take a logical, right? Uh, approach into into recognizing what it was that we were charged to deal with and overcome on a, on a constant basis. And so I'm fortunate personally to be able to say I'm able to do that to a degree and I still and I still struggle. You see what I'm saying? But I'm still able to do that to a degree. Like again, this show is so therapeutic, bro. Just in general. Just to have like everybody don't have this. This dynamic, I can bounce anything off you. Everybody don't have a Rio. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody don't have an E Fikes, bro. And, and, I, and imagine what we would be if they did. Be, yeah. a lot of, be a lot of money making. I I want to look at it two aspects. Okay. One, shout out to all the soldiers who were drafted. Mm. But you still were willing to make the sacrifice once you put that uniform on and you had to go do what you had to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't a lot of people shot in the back, running away because they were cowards. You know what I'm saying? Everybody faced their fears. Yeah. And back on Normandy and things like that, they were, you on the beach, commanding the beach. Like, yeah. it ain't no excuses. Command the beach. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, thankfully, we don't fight like that anymore. You know what I'm saying? But, like, the the courage of those people back then, I salute all of y'all. If you're still yeah. alive, I salute you. If you died during that time, I salute you. Like one love to everybody who served under those kind of circumstances. Yep. And then two, imagine fighting in a country you've never been to mm. against an enemy you've never seen, and they really hate you. <laughs> they really hate you all because you're wearing a uniform with a flag, flag on the shoulder. Yeah. And I'm not talking about I love you tomorrow type hate. I'm talking about I will hate you forever type yeah. hate. And they all they wearing the same clothes as civilians. They don't have a they don't have a uniform. So you're making those kind of split second decisions. Constant. And a lot of soldiers are second guessing decisions they had to make in order for them to get back to their families. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you have somebody in your in your family that served in the military, they're hot-tempered, they're always drinking, try to find somebody local that's a vet that they can talk to because maybe they won't seek it on their own, but you may save that person's life, you know what I'm saying, yeah. by introducing them to somebody. Because like you said, everybody don't have an Eric. Everybody don't have an Eric. Did did you just call my government on these airways? Damn, my bad. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody like, we know what the E stand for now. Right? (laughs) Like you posted on Facebook, dude. I know, right? Like, come on. (laughs) Who you fooling? (laughs) Boy, stop. (laughs) You're right, man. 100%, man. 100, bro. And that's what it is, man. So again, this is not, um, and I, I know this episode, right, is going to resonate um, with, with so many of our brothers and sisters out there, man, that even that's already getting help, seeking help, or or, um, or even thinking about it, or, or still has that, and right. you know, they, they think there's still a stigma associated with it, brother. I, I tell you, man, E-Fice, E-Fice talks to them people, bro. Dead yeah. ass. Do that information as you see fit, but 
You probably talk to them people. Yeah, it's free. Do it. Yeah. Real talk, Ooh. man. And then again, find find you a Rio, man. Find you some good wholesome counsel. Find you a good sounding board, man. That people who generally have your best interest at heart, because it uh it pays dividends. Uh, um, just just whether it's talking about mental health, it pays dividends. Whether you're talking business, it pays dividends. Whether you're just talking about some real life stuff, man. Yeah. Like it really does. And if you're that person sounding board, sometimes they don't want your opinion. They just want you to listen. And that's the hardest, it's been the hardest transition for me because I'm thinking everybody want my opinion. They come to me. No, mm -hmm. sometimes they just want you to listen. They want you to be that ear. They want you to be that person to give them a hug if they need it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. say, man, look, I love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It takes a real man to tell another man he loves him. You know, I'm going to tell you that straight up. I love you, dog. You know what I'm saying? I love I'm you too. I'm a real man. Come on, guys. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, I'm, a, I'm a real man. man. But we have to, bro. Um, again, um, I don't know. We can we can belabor this point um to the cows go home, man. But um take advantage of of all of the opportunities out there, man. Um there are some great organizations out there, man, and many of them, 99% of them have been established by people who've been through what you've been through or something oh, similar. Man. You know what I mean? And so the help is out there. And uh, we just got to, I want to say we got to humble ourselves. You need got to humble yourself. Just go. Yeah. Like, just don't keep even, your mind enough you, to go. You can go on it mad as hell. It don't matter. Just go. Yeah. Just go, man. Um, Because you matter. You matter not just to us. You matter to your family. You matter to everybody. You matter to every single person that you was meant to come to this earth on this physical journey this phase of your existence you matter to every single being that you were supposed to come in contact with throughout that journey bro you fucking matter and you have to know that you have to know that you are more and bigger and stronger than your demons bro right. you gotta know that um, your body's always stronger than your mind yeah yeah the, the 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 demons are there because they don't want you to be strong, bro. You know, they what only I mean? want you to see your weakness. Yeah, they want they want to highlight your weaknesses, man. Yeah. And um, as we as we as we continue to you know continue our physical journeys, man, would have you um, you you will find other individuals just like you that are going through what you're going through, and then who knows, you may be. You know that that's on the board for that individual, even though you're going through it yourself, man. So don't exactly. even don't don't rob that person of the opportunity of, of having their signing board, which is you. You know, to the point where you always say iron sharpens iron. Mm. There's no other motivator than somebody going through the same thing you going through. Y'all can go through it together. You can mm -hmm. relate on everything that they going through. Both of y'all will be motivated to get better. Yeah. If you're in the right headspace, if you're not in the right headspace, get help. That's it, bro. Yeah. Get help anyway. I don't care. I'm gonna close you. out like this. Don't even think your headspace good. Just go anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna close out like this. To anybody who's experienced any type of PTSD, whether that's the neighborhood you grew up in, the family you grew up in, a situation where you had a job that required more than you could feel like you could handle. Go get help. Go get help. I don't care. Look, contact us. We'll try to help you find help in your area. Like, the next breath you take matters to me, even if it don't matter to you. It matters to me. Yeah. So go get help or contact somebody local or us to help you. We're here for you, for real. Real talk. I hate to preach behind the preach. <laughs> oh, Get the people what you feel. Nah, man, I think they got it. Um, I don't feel like I left anything to chance, man, by this conversation. And I love, I love the fact that we we took this opportunity to have an open dialogue about it, bro. Um, and I wish that we had another vet um, with right. more perspective and more insight, man. So, again, back to Rio's plea at the beginning of the, the start of this. Uh, of this segment man we we hope that 
Um, you guys reach out to us, man. Let's have a conversation, bro. I, I know, um, you know, our, our topics are helter skelter because we, that's we it's a tent to reality show, dog. We wanted right. to be that. That's on purpose for people to say we don't stick to the scripts. <laughs> but. <Brandy>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I won't go say that. Not nah, just play. I mean, like I don't even know who you're talking about. I nah, know I'm playing. You know. Uh, but uh, but now that being said, though, I'm glad we took a moment to really address uh, something. I, I promise you, man, because uh, my heart has been heavy uh, for about a week or so now, and um, um, I always feel that, and I will always feel right when we lose a brother or a sister. I will always feel that I could have did more. Because if we were still winning uniform right now and they were struggling, I would move mountains. Yeah. To ensure their safety. I would move mountains to to bring them back, you know, to completeness. You see what I'm saying? Right. And um I I I'm challenging myself personally, right? E Fikes is challenging himself personally to move mountains now that I'm no longer in uniform. To move mountains whenever uh, or to build a coalition of people that are willing to move mountains for individuals that are still seeking uh, seeking help and advice and everything that you you know may be out there so um, look um, look for more from us in that regard um, and obviously when we when we when we put our, our pieces in place we got things established you guys will be the first to know man but just know that uh, real JD fights out here man we care we love you um, reach out to the show whenever, wherever, man. And for people, my people who uh, that listen to the show, and I say my people, <laughs> people who know me personally, right? Right. People, that sounds so weird. What you mean, you people? <laughs> but people who know me personally, uh, y'all already know my story, man. By all means, reach out, bro. We here. Yeah. We here, man. Let's have a, let's have a conversation, man. You are bigger than your demons. You are bigger than any and every experience that you you may have gone through over there, man. And so we want to help you uh, uh, to lead that shit over there. Let's just say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Again, bro, it's been a beautiful episode again, man. Always a pleasure to share these airways with you, man, especially when we get to talk about Army stuff. Always, bro. <laughs> Battle buddy means forever. Yes, sir. Peace. Yes, sir. In the meantime, in between time, live Peace. love life, y'all. Peace.